After losing LeBron James in free agency, the Cleveland Cavaliers looked to have a bleak future, but over time, the Cavs made some impressive moves that have made them one of the brightest futures in the entire NBA. They drafted Colin Sexton in 2018. They drafted Darius Garland with the fifth pick in 2019. They traded for Jared Allen, being maybe the biggest winner in the James Harden trade. They drafted Evan Mobley with the third pick, and their future looks really bright. And especially after, I would say, a successful season this year, the Cavs' future is gonna look impressive, and I can't wait to see how they do in the next couple years. So before I start, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, as it further motivates you to make more videos like this. So, let's get right into it. The Cavs last season, or this season, were 20th in offense and 7th in defense. And it was impressive how good the Cavs remained, even with so many injuries. Besides Kevin Love, every rotational member missed at least 12 games, which I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but every single person, and most of them missing over 20 games, that's so hard for this team to stay together when people are in and out of the rotation, Darius Garland in and out of the rotation, even their star players are out, then it's so impressive that this team was still able to stream wins together. And they just had so many different lineups, but over time, they were able to figure it out. And I think that if the injuries didn't occur, they would be in the playoffs right now. I think they would probably be the fifth seed in the Eastern Conference because they were around that range and we would be having a totally different story about the Cavs, their future being brighter. We'll see Darius Garland in the playoffs. Maybe we'll see like Jared Allen, Evan Mobley, see how legit these guys are. But talking about Darius Garland, Garland is the real deal. He's already an all-star, averaging 22. 8 assists, 3 rebounds on 38% from 3. He's improved so much. I'm pretty sure he was a top 3 most improved candidate. And just watching him, he just looks so more confident. Looking at his first year, I wouldn't say he was bad, but he was not very good. He was... He wasn't confident at all. He really struggled. He just didn't seem to fit. But then in the second year, it started to click a little bit more. He got more floaters. His three got his three ball was slowly improving. And then he went to like a 15 point per game score. And his passing also improved this year. Oh, that year. But then this year, he took the ultimate leap as a 20 point per game score. Pretty much a guy, a top 10 point guard in the entire NBA, and his passing, one of the best passers in the entire NBA, his three point shot also improved so drastically ever since his rookie year. His and a lot of people didn't really see Garland's passing as a positive coming into the draft. And that's why many people were very, not very happy with the Cavs drafting Garland and Sexton. Because many people believed that those were two ball dominant guys who just could score. But Garland improved his playmaking so much. And especially with a lot of options as lobs, which we'll talk about those players later. Lucas. Garland has really fit in with this team. And I really want to see how he performs in in the future i mean he's probably gonna get that full max extension because he deserves it and he's just improved so much and i think he can improve even more maybe just get maybe he can become like a 25 and 10 type of player i really think that is possible for darius garland he's proven to me that he can step up he's only like 22 years old and the the Cavs found their franchise point guard then you have evan mobley their third pick in the draft and evan mobley people forget Mobley's only 20 years old and he's still clamping up people. He put up around 16, 5, 16, 8 rebounds, and 2 assists. And his defense has been so impressive. He is no doubt the real deal and has a case for Rookie of the Year. Now, I think it's either it's, it's, it's going to be Cade, Scotty, or Mobley, which I don't really care who gets it because it's Rookie of the Year. It's probably the most, the least impactful award. But still, Mobley's just impact is undeniable and especially how good Garland and Mobley fit together that pairing is also just gonna grow together in the future now you would like to see Mobley's jump shot improve but he has a mechanic I think he only shot like 30% from three but he's only a rookie and if he can improve that as someone who can do some stuff around the post he's a good he's a solid pastor passer if he can improve his jump shot to be at least respectable from three-point territory then Mobley on both ends is going to be an absolute monster then you have Jerry Allen and people forget that Allen is also only 23 years old so that means that Garland 22 I think Mobley 20 Jared Allen 23 these guys are insanely young and insanely good. He put up 16 points, 11 rebounds, and 1.5 blocks. And he's also such an impactful defender. 
protecting the rim. His perimeter defense is also solid. And alongside Mobley, they've just built a very good defense. And that's, I mean, that big ball lineup, that big ball lineup, not a lot of people expected that to work, but especially with Lowry Markkinen, they signed him and he's also been solid as a stretch big, averaging 15 points. That big ball lineup has really worked and on both ends. Especially if Mobley can guard the perimeter, which he has. Jared Allen, just the person down low. And Lowry can at least keep his hold on the perimeter. And then someone like Isaac Okoro to defend the perimeter. Then this team is big, versatile. And if they can, if Mobley can improve his shot, they can all shoot pretty well besides Allen. But the Cavs have built up a really interesting recipe that has looked to work. And... Allen also has improved as a role man. Both Mobley and Allen are good role men for Garland to just feed them okay. so many easy buckets. And then just look at the other players. You have Colin Sexton. And yes, his free agency is looming and we'll, they probably will not resign him because they've had their best season when Sexton was out. And I really, I don't really think he fits in with this roster. Then you have someone like Isaac Okoro and hopefully he can take the next step. His defense is already there, but his offense hasn't really been amazing. If he can improve his shot as an elite 3 and D player, and then maybe be able to do some stuff off the dribble. I can really see him being like an OG and an OB type player. I then traded for Karis Levert in the trade deadline, a solid player who could score a little bit, pass a little bit. I think he's a long-term person. I'm pretty sure he signed an extension, but overall in this off season, they have to definitely wonder about a couple things. First, Colin Sexton. I said they probably shouldn't re-sign him, and I personally think that they shouldn't. They should just let and walk away in free agency he doesn't really fit in this team anymore and yes maybe he doesn't get any deals but if someone offers him like a 20 million dollar deal no i'm letting him go he just alongside garland not the best fit and i don't really think sexton as a ball dominant player who likes to shoot undersized doesn't work with garland so i would personally like to see him go and then maybe trade Kevin Love. I mean, Kevin Love had a six man of the year type candidacy. I think he's top three already. And Love definitely revived his career. His body language has been a lot better. His shot, I think he had like 20 points in the first quarter or in a quarter, which was so impressive this season. And Kevin Love, maybe they can trade him now. His contract is still a lot, 30 million. But now that it's becoming, I think it's an expiring or maybe two years left, maybe it's possible to ship Kevin Love out. And then they also want another ball handler next to Garland, which makes sense. Garland is an amazing ball handler, passer, but you want another secondary person who, when Garland is off the floor or you want Garland to do a little bit of off ball, you can trust that guy. And I think Ricky Rubio was a good player for that. And that's why they were so good. But Rubio, of course, towards ACL, which sucks. And if they can find that second ball handler, who's not really as ball dominant as Colin Sexton or scoring happy as Colin Sexton, then that would be such a good acquisition. And then maybe they can get some more shooters. I would definitely say so. I mean, it's because Larry Markin at the three is still such a weird philosophy, but if they can work it out, then it works. And the future looks awesome, and I can't wait to see how they do next season. I wouldn't be surprised if they can break out like the Memphis Grizzlies did this season, where they set their identity on the defensive side of the ball. They get some transition points. Their, their star point guard takes another leap. Their young players also take another leap, like Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, Isaac Coro. And this team is legit. We saw them okay. already compete. I'm pretty sure like, like in the middle of the season, they're like one game away from the one seed, which for this Cavs team is such an accomplishment. Now they did slide down because of all the injuries, but I really just want to see how how they can perform. Will their young guys improve? What will they do in the offseason too? Especially after this, I would still say it's a successful season. I know they did lose in the play-in, but it was a better season than a lot of people expected. And what will they do with Sexton? Will they get another ball handler? Will they get more shooters? Will they trade Kevin Love? We will see, but no doubt the future is bright in Cleveland. So that being said, that's been my thoughts about the Cleveland Cavaliers. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all next time.